Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Kingfish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be trying to breed the Neon Tetra. Now the Neon Tetra is one of the most common fish in the entire aquarium hobby. In fact, these guys are sold in their millions every year. So today we are gonna be trying to spawn them. Now, if you've seen my other video, which is gonna be up here, you guys can go and watch where I went to the pet store and bought these guys. Now, they have been conditioned and I've actually got them to lay eggs before. Now, I tried to use like a different method, but today we're gonna be trying another method using some peat moss and just some other stuff in a little temporary container and trying to breed them that way. So the Neon Tetra is often regarded as quite a tricky fish to breed and I've never actually bred these guys before like in the past. So this is gonna be like my first ever attempt so um, it's gonna be pretty interesting. In today's episode, we're gonna be trying to get the eggs. And then in the next video, I'm gonna be hatching the eggs. And then in the video after that, I'm gonna be raising the young. So this will be in like a playlist you guys can go through and you guys can watch all the videos. And then at the end of this, is gonna be a big summary video, which is gonna pretty much give you all the information you needed to know in a really bite-sized piece of content. So without any further ado, let's go have a look at the neons. So here are my neon tetras. Now I bought 10 of these guys about a week ago. As you can see, there's 10 of them in here and we've got a mix of males and females in here and as you can see their bellies are super full so i've been feeding these guys lots of different foods i've been feeding them some micro pellets and i've been feeding them some baby brine shrimp and some frozen blood worms and things like that just to get them a lot of protein inside of them and to get them really really fat and healthy so these guys are very very fat if you saw the last video they were very skinny and now they are pretty much ready to go. So what we're gonna do is, the way these guys breed from what I've read is you have to try and mimic the rainy season in the Amazon where they're from. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna have to lower the pH in the water significantly. So my area in Brisbane, the pH is about a 7.8 and we probably have to get that below a seven at least, probably like a 6.5 would be really good. And we also have to drop the temperature and convince them that it's rain. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna obviously try and pick out a male and a female and they breed very, very similar to the zebra danio, and they are like a egg scattering fish. So what they're gonna do is once they're conditioned properly and once they're ready to lay eggs, they're gonna go in like a piece of moss like you can see here, and they're gonna go through that early in the morning, just a pair of them, and they're gonna scatter a bunch of eggs around and lay them everywhere. So they're not like organized egg layers. These guys will just lay eggs wherever they can. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and use a separate container. We're gonna use a bit of peat moss and we're gonna lower the pH of the water like that. And then we're gonna lower the temperature. So the temperature in this aquarium is like a 28 Celsius. So that's, I, I think that's like about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna significantly lower that. And then in the next couple of days, once I get these guys even a little bit more fat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out a pair and I'm gonna drop them in there in the evening and then hopefully in the morning when all the aquarium lights come on, they will spawn for me and then I can take them out and put them back in here. So let's go have a look at the other setup. So what we're gonna be using today is just some peat moss. Now you can get this at pretty much any old hardware store. It cost me like six bucks for this bag of this. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this container here, which is actually the first ever container I kept fish in. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the bottom of this with some of the peat moss. So you can just soak this stuff in water and then it'll just sink to the bottom. So I'm guessing it'll take like three days for it to sink and clear up a bit. But we're also gonna add a sponge filter over here. And we're also gonna add like a heater here to get the temperature to about 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna try that. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna raise the temperature the second time, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've just mixed up the peat like moss with some water. And obviously it's not the prettiest site, but this is what's gonna to sink to the bottom. So it could probably take a couple of days for this stuff to sink down to the bottom. But I'm just gonna quickly mention to you, if you're gonna try and breed these guys, make sure that your peat moss is organic. You don't wanna have any pesticides or anything like that because it'll obviously harm or kill the fish. So it's really important that you get organic stuff. So I'm just gonna add this to the bottom of the container and then I'm gonna fill it up with some aquarium water and then put the heater and the filter in it. You can really see here just how temporary the setup is. This is just a sponge filter and like a really, really old heat up and then basically there's an aquarium here I'm just gonna siphon some of this aquarium water into this tank so yuck yuck okay as you guys can see this is literally in the corner of my fish room next to a brine shrimp hatchery that's very temporary as well so this is gonna take quite a bit of time for it to settle as you can see there's like a bunch of that peat moss floating on the top of the aquarium. So we're gonna have to wait for this to all sink down. The sponge filter in there is powering through, so it should be okay. And we've also got a heater in there cooling the aquarium down. So 
We'll see how it all goes. I'm not too sure how long this will take. It could take quite a bit of time for it to settle, maybe a couple of days, but hopefully not because I want to get straight into the breeding. Okay, so now the next stage of this is gonna be preparing some foods for when these guys do give birth. So because you can see how small these guys are, as an adult, they're already under an inch in size. So the fry are gonna be even smaller than this. The fry are actually very, very tiny and they have way too small of a mouth to take brine shrimp or any other live foods, which I love to feed. So I normally breed angelfish and things like that. And when the fry are first born, they're normally able to take newly hatched baby brine shrimp. Now these guys definitely will not be able to do that. So we're gonna to have to resort to something else. So what we're gonna to have to resort to is an infusoria kit. So I've done an infusoria kit a handful of times. I'm not very good at doing them and we're gonna to have to give it a go. So I'm gonna to have to set up an infusoria kit for these guys because then I'll have something to feed them and get them up to size where they can take baby brine shrimp and grow really, really quickly. So for my infusoria kit, I'm gonna be using some broccolini. And basically what I've gotta do is I'm gonna boil this down until it's very, very, very soft. I'm gonna get it really, really soft. And then I'm gonna add it to this jar and it's just gonna to sink to the bottom and I'm gonna add some aquarium water. And the aquarium water will have a lot of little microorganisms and bacteria and things like that. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna create like a big bacterial bloom and then the microorganism is going to be able to use the bacteria from the bacteria bloom to start to reproduce. And then you'll just see there'll be like millions and millions of little tiny bacteria and creatures that we can feed to our babies. So this will take a week. It's going to be a pretty lengthy process because they're going to smell really, really bad. But hopefully by the time that the eggs hatch, we will have a food to feed them. This is going to be a really important stage, especially for getting a really, really big batch of fry. So it's important that we don't just get like 30 of these guys, we want to get like at least 100. Because I'm breeding these guys for profit, I want to be able to get as many as possible because I'm only going to get like under a dollar a fish, so. Okay, so it's really important that you leave your infusoria kit on a windowsill because it needs the natural sunlight to create heat in here and it's also going to help the bacteria to bloom. So this is going to sit here for a week and we've just got the broccolini down there all blanched and really, really soft. So we'll see how this goes over the next week. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since the last time I recorded and these guys have been getting very, very fat. As you can see, there's a few females in here that have really, really big bellies. So I'm gonna be taking out a few of these guys. I'm gonna be putting them in the box now that the peat moss has settled. So basically, it's now night time. As you can see, there's no light coming into the room and this is the night before I want them to spawn. So basically the plan is I'm gonna fish out a couple of males and I'm gonna fish out a couple of females and put them into my container. So I'm gonna leave them overnight and I'm gonna come back in the morning and hopefully we'll see some spawning because the way these guys spawn, they will lay their eggs in the morning. So the pH in this aquarium is currently a 7.8 and then in the other room, the pH is about a 6.4 to 6.5. So hopefully that's a big enough drop for them to think that it's rained. And also I've adjusted the temperature the temperature in this room is 28 degrees and in the other room it's 25. So hopefully these big, big girls here will think that it's rain and they'll want to spawn. So I'm gonna fish out a few of them now and I'm gonna pick out obviously the biggest ones there because you can see they've been fed really, really intensely. So that's why the aquarium is so dirty because I've been overfeeding these guys, which is bad and good. I haven't done a water change because I don't want them to get confused. I want them to keep as many eggs as possible so I get a really, really big batch. Okay, so the neons are now in their little container, which will be where they're gonna lay the eggs. So as you can see, I've set up the Java moss to sit there. I originally added the sponge filter to create a bit of motion up the top so that some of this, obviously this peat would start to sink. So that really did help. And now I've taken that out and these guys are ready to go. So basically the plan is I'm gonna cover this up with a blanket and then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna take the blanket off and turn this light on. And hopefully they'll start to spawn because you can see there's quite a few of them. There's some really big fat ones in here. There's about six of them in here. So I've got a mix of males and females and they should go through that jar of moss and start to spawn over it. And then after that, I could take them out and then I can hatch the eggs. So it should be pretty interesting. You can see they've got some really good color. So that makes me hopeful that they're ready to breed and they're ready to go. Okay, so I woke up pretty early the next morning and then I took the towel off of the aquarium and I turned the light on. And within 15 minutes, these guys were already starting to spawn. What, well, what I can believe to be spawning. So I didn't actually see many eggs being laid, if any eggs. I didn't really get too close because I didn't really want to disrupt the spawning. So I kind of just watched these guys from afar. And what you're seeing on camera is the closest I got to these guys because I used a camera to kind of like zoom in on them and see what was happening. But 
there was quite a bit of time there where the males were like fighting and uh, females are kind of like sitting around and what I saw was quite often the males were trying to drag the females into the moss. Now there was a piece of footage that I got where there was actually a lot of action happening inside of the moss and this is what I believe to be breeding. And so I'm really hopeful that this was the Neon Tetris laying the eggs because That'd be really, really good because we obviously need some eggs to successfully have bred these guys. But there was a bit of breeding, but it also looked like there was a couple Neon Tetris sitting down the bottom and they were just eating the eggs if there were any eggs. So they seem to be nipping at like the surface of the Java moss and the substrate. So I'm really hoping that they weren't eating any of the eggs or if they were eating the eggs that they weren't eating very many of them. But I let these guys do that for about an hour and 15 minutes and then I decided to fish them out after that. So I came and I grabbed all six of them out and then I had a look at them from above. So here's what all the adults look like from above. Now, I'm not too sure as to whether there has been much spawning, but it does seem to appear that a lot of the fish seem skinnier than the last time I recorded them from above. So hopefully that means that the females have laid quite a few eggs in there. But of course, we're not going to know for a couple of days whether there are any eggs in there. So I'm just crossing my fingers here, hoping that there's a few fry that I can raise up. And yeah, I mean, they do look to be quite a bit skinnier. So I'll get these guys back into their main tank and get them a good feed. 